Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for making your time available to us today in your very busy schedule. Uh, and I'd like to uh, get into your successes and perhaps your failures since the 2nd of July. But before Thanks. I do so, before I do yes. so, Mr. Prime Minister, I'd just like to get your reaction to the federal election in the United States, the result, and what impact that may have on Australia. Ah, of course, the presidential election, you mean? Because we have federal elections here, and that's why I'm the Prime Minister. The, Australia's position is quite clear. We will work with any government over, overseas. And I welcome Donald, President-elect Donald Trump as the new president-to-be. He will make a wonderful president, mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> and he, he will... Yeah, he will surprise us with what he's going to do next. <laughs> and the effect on Australia? The effect on Australia is going to be very positive. I saw that on the exchange rate this morning. Yes. So, so you, you feel that uh, his election will be a positive thing, not only for Australia, but for the Asian region as well? Oh yes. We've got great arms supplies in Australia, which we can start exporting to countries where Donald Trump's not going to allow their arms to be exported to. And think of all the other markets we're going to have opened up to us when President-elect Donald Trump puts up the, uh, the barriers around these countries and starts applying tariffs. We're going to have so many more places to export our raw materials and, and our manufactured goods to. It's going to be brilliant for Australia having President-elect Donald Trump in power. That may be good for Australia, Mr Prime Minister, but what of other lower wages countries in the Asian region, such as Singapore, Indonesia, with low wages, do you think that they will miss out on trade agreements with the US? I don't think so. And I think it's, we're going to be opening up those countries as well, because as President-elect Donald Trump becomes an isolationist, He's going to insist on not dealing with anyone else in the world, which means our sphere of influence over other economies is going to be greater. And those countries are going to start wanting to export to us and also import from us as well. So I think it's going to drive the economy of the world because they're not going to be hung up on America all the time. So it's going to be positive for everyone. OK, thank you, Mr Prime Minister, for your views on the election. Coming back to your progress since July, and I know it's uh, been a very torrid time for you since you since the election on the 2nd of July, so it's only been five months, but how do you feel that your government score has been since taking over the reins of government? Well, we all know by the American election that the pollsters are always wrong. And so I wouldn't be looking at the pollsters at the moment just because they're saying my approval rating has dropped down to the mid-20s. I wouldn't believe that. It's really up in the high 70s. The pollsters are just polling the wrong people. And so, you say I'm more up having a torrid time. That, that's not really that true, is it? But do you feel that you've been, able, you've been successful in getting any of your uh, reforms through the Parliament? That's not what Parliament's for. It's not to get reforms through. It's to be able to grandstand and set up for myself and my career after politics. Well, in that case, I'm learning something here, Mr. Prime Minister, no, along I with the with Gosford City Toast Class, and I by the sounds of things. I jest with you. Of course, we're getting our pol policies through. But first of all, we've got to make it appear that the opposition are winning. So we, we put through what we think the opposition is going to balk at as a policy. And they, they're going to look at our policies, figure out how extreme it is. But at the same time, our real policy is only a fraction of that. So when we bartered with the opposition, they'll barter us down to what we really wanted to reform. It works perfectly. We'll see. We'll see. That sounds uh, sounds a very positive thing, Mr. Prime Minister. And oh, it I is. I applaud you for that uh, that action. Oh, it's very positive. Now, turning to something perhaps a little bit more negative, what do you what do you think that your government's biggest failures have been since you've taken government? Ah, that's a good question indeed, and I've considered this at great length. I've decided the biggest problem of our government is our junior ministers, and not even our senior ministers. I'm going to have to send them all out to Toastmasters, because they just can't speak to the public very well. They're not getting their message across. If they were getting their message across, our poll ratings, of which of course are always incorrect, would be a lot higher. So I'm going to send them all out to individual clubs and boost up their poll ratings. Uh, I'm sorry, their speaking abilities. 
There are very uh, erudite members of your parliament who can speak in front of the camera. Are you referring to any members of your parliament in particular? Yes, the ones which can't speak very well. Uh, would you like to name names, Mr Prime Minister? This oh, I could not possibly do that. That's all confidential, except for the people who actually see them on TV. Okay, okay. Uh, turning now, uh, you, you've talked about your positive role in, in government and, and your failures. But have you had any frustrations in government? I truly have, and I blame this all onto the ABC. This is why tonight we're on the Gosford TV channel and not the ABC. The ABC are very biased. They are. They always seem to be favouring the opposition, and, and we're going to, as a policy decision, we're going to cure that. We're going to ban the ABC. Well done, Mr. Prime Minister. I applaud you also on that action. I'm sure that the Gosford City Taskmaster would join me in applauding you in that action. Just one, uh, one penultimate question here. What future plans do you have to push Australia into economic prosperity? Ah, yes. This is down to my heart. So I'm going to make this a multi-pronged policy. First of all, it's going to be education. We're going to educate the masses so that they can all get into a better paid job. That means that we're going to have no menial jobs left because we know what to do because we'll all be better educated. This is the second problem of it. We're going to encourage more immigration to fill in the low paid jobs which are now going to be vacated by the newly educated people who move up to higher paid jobs. And that drives the economy forward because we'll have all these people who do the menial jobs. Now, to add to that, we're going to invent export markets. And thanks to my friends in America who carefully put Donald Trump in place, to allow the opening up of our export markets by them not exporting to anywhere anymore because no one likes them, we're going to push our economy forward and prosper. Well done, Mr Prime Minister. That sounds great. We're running out of time here, but I'm going to ask you one final question, if I may, Mr Prime Minister. Are there times when you wish that you were not the Prime Minister and were just a retired old gent like so many lucky Australians? <laughs> yes, funny enough, there is those times, and that's when I go to the supermarket. I do hate being noticed in the supermarkets being the Prime Minister because people come up to me and they ask such strange questions like, with your policies I can't earn enough to buy my favourite food. Of course you can, you just prioritise things incorrectly. But of course if I went in incognito and not been where no one could recognise me, I can then do my shopping in peace. Mr Prime Minister, we're out of time. I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much.